Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Tech Tuesday, presented by Delta Media Group, where if you're happy with your real estate technology solution and you know it, clap your hands. Sorry, I watched a movie with it. Never mind. Um, so today, we are going to go in and we're going to take a look at the sold listings display system. So first off, there are two different ways that you can display solds. The first is if we're getting data from the MLS, where we can... Um, actively display sold listings like on the regular property search on your website those can be narrowed down to just your listings so that's one method so what we're doing is taking the listing data from the MLS finding the ones that you were associated with the sale on basically based on the data that we're getting and displaying those in the regular property search so that's one way the other way is that there is a page that is dedicated to the display of your solds and that's the one we're going to go over today so let's jump into the Delta net and see how that works so first and foremost, if you'd like to set up this page, you want to set up the page itself. So we're going to go down here to Website and then Pages. And it's going to think about it for a moment. A couple of moments. It's getting there. So what we're going to do when we get to this page is we're going to have the option of editing our existing pages, creating a new page. And one of the new pages we're able to create is a predefined sold listings page. So, let me try it again here. There we go. Just had to think about it for a minute. So here we are. Now, what I'm going to do is go down here and click on New Page. You can see this is my, my list of pages here on the left. So that's going to be all the pages that kind of came along with the system and all of those that I've added in as custom pages. So I'm going to click on New Page. And then this menu loads here on the right. We want Predefined and that will allow us to choose from the pages that we've kind of pre-built in the platform that you can just select from. And then we'll click the predefined page drop down and these are all the different types of predefined pages. One of which, and because we're on the demo site you can see a lot of these are duplicated, you won't see two options for all those like I do. Um, but one of the options down here is the sold listings page. And again there are two here because this is the you know our demo site. But if I click on one, now it's all set to act as my, um, my sold listings page. So from here, I have comma separated or a comma separated section for keywords. The nice thing about this is I can create multiple sold listings pages. So the way this page is going to work is there's another page in the Delta Net that we'll go over that lists out all the sold listings I have. I can attach keywords to those sold listings and then I can also attach the matching keyword to one of these pages. And by doing so, only the listings with the matching keyword for this page will be displayed here. Um, it could be nice for if you wanted to make regional based sold listings pages. So for example, if I said I had an Akron sold listings page and a Canton sold listings page, I could put the keyword Akron on this one and then I could make another one with the keyword Canton. And then all of my Akron listings, I'll put that keyword on them on the sold listings page. And all the, so all the Akron ones put the Akron keyword, all the Canton ones put the Canton keyword and then they'll, each one will display on the page they're supposed to. So we'll leave that blank for now. Now I can also narrow this down if I don't want to narrow it down with the keywords. I can put a minimum and maximum price here and it's going to limit the solds that it displays to that price range. I can choose whether or not I want to show the listing comments and I can also choose whether or not the map displays on this page. There's actually a map that displays up at the top and shows where all of my different sold listings are. The next thing I can do is we have this solds header section. So up at the top of the page above the map, it'll display some content here. This is some content. There we go. So now we'll have something to look at. Link title. Um, like the other listings in the system or like the other pages in the system, um, all the custom pages that you create, the link title is what will appear in your navigation if you choose to show this page in your navigation. Um, and it's what people will click on to get to this page. So we'll say, I think I might have a my sold listings already. So I'm, I'm mixing it up, my previous sales. Now it'll make the page title match. The page title is what will show up up here in the browser tab or, um, or even in the browser heading, depending on what kind of browser you're using. It's also something that'll be picked up and shown on the search results pages. And the next thing we have is the meta description tag, like the other custom pages. That is just a short paragraph, like a readable paragraph that describes what your page is about. 
And then meta keywords are individual keywords separated by commas or even short phrases that are also meant to describe what the page is about. That doesn't need to be readable, it's just a, um, you know, just a series of keywords. I will say that most search engines don't use these keywords anymore, so you can, you can choose to enter them or not. It doesn't hurt to have them in place though. And the next thing you can do is you can set these campaigns up. Um, what this will do is, again, the same as any other custom page you create. If somebody is logged into a portfolio account on your website and they visit this page, they will automatically be added to whatever email account or email account, whatever email campaign you have checked here. So if I were to check the Zillow campaign, for example, I have an email campaign called the Zillow campaign. If somebody goes to my website and they're logged into their account and they go to this page, it'll automatically drop them into that campaign if they're not already in it, and then they'll start getting emails from that campaign. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, and for this page in particular, you could make a um, seller targeted email campaign. So you put a bunch of emails that are all designed to target um, you know, potential sellers and set it up so that when somebody visits this page, they automatically get dropped into that campaign and start getting emails from you. So keep in mind, they do have to be logged in though. So they have to have an account already so, it, you know, so that we know who to email it to. <laughs> So now that our page is set up, I'm going to go down here and click Update Page. So there we go. So now our page is all set. And I'm also going to click this to open it up in a new tab because we're going to come back and take a look at it later. We'll let that load for now. All right. So now once we've set up our sold listings page, what we can do is go down here to Listings and then Sold Listings. Now this is the page that dictates kind of how that sold listings page works and what listings will display on that page. So from here, you can see I have a bunch of listings in here automatically. Mine are all going to be manual or unknown just because um, nothing is coming in for me automatically from the MLS. However, if we are getting data from the MLS um, for sold listings for you, the system should be picking those up and automatically putting them on this page for you or automatically attaching them to you basically. Um, now if you have an older saved listing or something that's never in the system, something that we don't have data for, you can still go in here and you can add in listings manually. You would just go down here, put in the MLS ID of your listing, hit find listing, and it'll bring back every listing that matches. And you can see there's a checkbox next to them, so I can go down here and I can check and uncheck whatever boxes I want for the listings that I actually want to add, and then hit add se selected sold listings down here at the bottom, and that will put those sold listings on that page in the Delta Net, which by proxy puts them on the um, you know, my publicly displayed sold listings page. Now as we kind of scroll down through here, you can see for each one of these listings it has a sold price. So it's going to put the listed price as whatever we have data for in our system already. But it lets me define what the sold price is, so I would put that in. I can put in sold or pending. Um, originally the system was built kind of before pending listings were often included in the MLS data feeds. So you could add your pending listings here. But now you'll typically be adding everything as sold. You can determine whether you represented the buyer or the seller or both by just checking these boxes. You can put in a tagline for this listing. If there are MLS comments in our system, it will pick those up and display them here. But I could also type in my own comments if I want. And there you go. So once you're all set up and you have the listings you want selected, you'll just hit Add Selected Sold Listings and we'll add them to the system and basically attach them to you so that they'll show up on your sold listings page. So now we'll go back to the sold listings page. Now once those listings have been added, you'll see them in this list here. You can just click delete if you want to delete them. Um, you can also see where they came from. So like I said, mine are manually entered. If they were entered automatically, they would say automatic over here. Um, there is another way they can be entered if you were to create a sold listing or a, um, yeah, a sold listings e-card. So if you went into the e-card system, created a sold listings e-card, and then put in the address of a listing there, the system would assume that you have then sold it, so it would automatically drop it into this page as well. If it does that, the source will show as e-card on those, so you'll be able to see if any were created that way. Now the other thing you can do is I can click on the MLS number on this page, and it's going to load up kind of the edit page for that sold listing. So from here, I can see what the original price was, the sold price that I filled in, the sold date, and I have a couple more options. Um, as far as the kind of things that I can do that I couldn't do when I first added it. Mainly, I have this keywords field, which is the one we discussed earlier. So if I had created my sold listings page with the Canton keyword, I would come in here and type in Canton, and that would mean that I want this listing to display on the Canton page. Um, now, 
Doing it by area is kind of a bad example for this, but I can apply multiple keywords to these. So if I had one sold listings page with a keyword of Canton and one of Akron, and then I went into this listing and I added both keywords to it, it would display on both of those pages. So now as we go down, the next thing we can see is the comments. If there were originally comments from the MLS, they'll be here. If you added comments when you added the sold, if you added the sold, those would be here also. And then you can also see the map so that you can adjust where it actually shows or where the pin shows on a map. Lastly, we keep one photo for sold listings. The idea is we don't keep the, you know, the entire full range of photos for sold listings like we do for actives. Um, typically, it's just not necessary. So we just have that one photo. And this is where you would change out that photo if you want to. So it's going to use whatever we have in our data. But if you have an updated photo or you want to use a different one, this is where you would set that up. You just click on Choose File, select the file from your computer, and hit Upload Photo. And that will pull the photo in and attach it to this listing. All right, so the next thing you can do for solds, let me go down here. So we're, again, under Listings and Sold Listings. So I'll go back to that Sold Listings page. Now we're going to scroll down a bit. Now we saw that this is where we add in new listings. Um, if I put in an MLS ID like the one that I did earlier and it finds a match, then it takes me to those matches and I can select which ones I want, which ones I want to add. However, um, we'll see if I can, here we'll just type in something crazy. And I hit Find Listing. Now it notices that it doesn't find any in our system. So there's nothing in our database with an MLS ID that matched what I typed in. So what I can do is if we read through this message, it says I can click here to manually add the listing. So if I click here, it takes me to this page where I can go in and manually enter all that listing data. So even if you're trying to add a sold listing that was you know, from back before we had data for it or back before you were on our platform, just for whatever reason we don't have data for that one, you can still add it to your sold listings page by clicking that link and then adding it in manually here. So to do this, you just fill out all the listing information, and it's all pretty, um, pretty straightforward. You add your picture here at the end, and you hit Create Sold, and then I'll create it, and it will add it to your Sold Listings page. All right, so we'll go back to Listings and Sold Listings once again, and move down to the next thing on that page, whatever that was. <laughs> so we'll scroll down, and the next option I have here is the Solds Template. So by default, um, it may well be on the one column layout. Um, this account has been created for a while, so we might not be setting that as the default anymore. But you can see we have a few different options. The one that you want, and the newest one, is the responsive version. So I'm going to click on responsive, click on change template. So now that puts me on the newest template. So if I click over here, now this is the sold listings page that we opened earlier. So we can see it loads up. Here's my content that I put up in the header, so you can see where that displays. And then here's a listing. Now what it's doing is it's trying to fit all of my listings on here. And since I um, invented a listing in Beverly Hills, it needs a pretty big map. But other than that, it shows the map and shows the pins for all the sold listings that um, all the sold listings that I have that display on this page. And this is still an interactive map, so I can move this around. I can zoom in if I hold down my command key here. And I can click on it and see information about each of these solds. Now if I scroll down a bit, it's going to actually show all of my sold listings here. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know how many it does per page, but it does something like 25 per page. And it will actually paginate if you have more than that. So if you have, you know, 50 saved listings, it'll break them down into multiple pages so it doesn't try to load them all at once. Uh, the other thing you can do here is I can have this sort by different criteria. So it's going to sort pri price high to low by default, but I can change that by date or price low to high. So I have a few options as you know the person visiting this page as to how I want to see these listings. But overall, it makes for a pretty nice sold listings page. And you can go here and have this all set up. And it's an easy way to display all of your solds in a way that you have a little more control over it than if you were to just use the regular search results page. Now, the last thing we have on our sold listings page, so we're back under listings and sold listings in the Delta Net. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that we have a couple more options here. If uh, your company is getting sold data and we're attaching that stuff automatically, but you don't want the system to automatically attach your sold listings to you, you do have the ability to opt out of that. So this first drop down, if you switch that to yes, the system will no longer automatically add sold listings to you. Uh, the next thing it will do is that whenever it adds a sold listing, it'll automatically send you a notification email. If you don't want those notification emails, but you still want it to add the solds, 
then you can go here and change this to yes, and that will opt you out of receiving those, uh, those email notifications every time a new sold listing is added. So there you have it. That is the sold listings platform. Um, like I said, it gives you a lot more options and a lot more control over exactly which sold listings show and how you want to display your sold listings to the people that are actually coming to and using your website. Um, the other option is you just have a search results page or a link to a search results page that just says show all of my solds based on what came from the MLS. So the drawback there is that if you have something that's older that we don't have data from the MLS or from that MLS for, you won't be able to add it because it's just showing the data that we're getting. Um, and you don't have control or the same kind of control over showing me just solds based on keywords. So you could still do them by area because it's a search result page. You know, you can still say show me all results from Canton, for example. But this really allows you to fine tune it with those keywords and create multiple solds or multiple sold listings pages that look at sold listings based on different criteria or based on different options that you can really fine tune however you want to. So there you have it. Um, the last piece of this is like any other custom page. You would just add this page or a link to this page to your navigation and it'll show up there at the top. And then people can click on it to get straight to these pages. Well, this page or these pages if you've created multiple ones. So there you go. That's all there is to it. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to send an email into support at deltagroup.com or give us a call and we will be happy to work with you and help you work through anything you need. So thanks a lot for joining me and I'll see you again next week.